We got to get to Steve and the DVD he received oh, in the mail. Jesus. Steve, I think it's just a matter of him getting. Steve's like an air traffic controller. Uh, you know how it is with those guys. They work. They're they're under so much pressure and stress. It's the same thing every day. Yeah. High pressure. They're getting the same information, and occasionally they get what's called burnout. Yeah. And you know what happens? Planes hit each other. <laughs> and That's what just carnage and fiery right. wreckage everywhere. But with you, <laughs> you just start. You can't distinguish between fact and fiction anymore. Right. Between the real and the fake. And mm -hmm. he gives us these things that are supposed to be these video clips on the internet that are real. And we watch him, and Opie just looks and goes, Oh my God, this is so fake. Like, before it even happened. And you gave me a copy to bring home with me. He was all well, excited. Uh, I should I, I should, I should, just... Uh, do the setup, the premise. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the premise DVD, of this yeah. whole thing is I got an email from somebody who had seen the, a, a movie called Delusions in Modern Primitism, uh, primi fuck, Primitivism, on oh. the Sundance Channel. Goonga, was, uh, goonga, goonga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I couldn't even get it out right. Uh, and it was a movie, or a 17-minute documentary, quote-unquote, about mm -hmm. a guy who had gotten so tired of his piercings and tattoos that he wanted to take the next step in body modification. Now, I've seen all kinds of body modification. I've seen people putting silicone horns on their heads. I've yep. seen people slicing open their tongues. Seen the rings? People yeah. get rings and they slice their forearms mm -hmm. like up top on the top and then slide these rings underneath, underneath yeah. the skin. So they have what amounts to rings under their skin. It looks reptilian almost. Yeah. There's guys that tattoo their faces to look like reptiles and snakes yep. and lizards. People just sawing off fingers because mm -hmm. it looks cool and it's just body modification. Fangs. So I've seen permanent yeah, fangs. Permanent fangs. Sawing down their teeth. So the big rings in the ears that you could almost put your arms right, through. Right. Yep. <laughs> and so I've seen all kinds of extreme stuff. So this uh, email that I got was describing how this guy's next step in body modification was he wanted to get a gunshot wound. All right. All right. So, and in the email was the director's uh, email address. Uh, it wasn't the director that emailed me. It was just some guy who had seen it and said, email the director. His, here's his address. So I said, oh, wow, that sounds pretty cool. So I emailed the guy. I said, a fan told us about your documentary. I'd really want to see it. Do you think you can send us a copy? Here's my number if you, don't, if, uh, if you want to talk to me about it. Talk to the guy. And I'm trying to recall the conversation in my head as to what I actually said. Uh, you know, about the movie or what we discussed. I don't think a whole lot was discussed other than send it here. I, re I really want to see it. Mm -hmm. So I saw it last night, and I handed up a copy of the 17-minute DVD, and it is shot documentary style. Mm -hmm. And it yes. chronicles this young guy named Jerome in the suburban Texas. Could you get us just the audio of the piece you showed us? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to play this on yeah. the air. It's, uh, it amounts to him sitting in a chair... Right. With sandbags behind him. Right. Uh, his pal? Is it a friend of his? Or is this it, somebody that does this? Somebody that does this that I, does and slash this. a friend of his. Now, yeah. this is in a garage-type atmosphere. It's a, it's, it, it's, it looks like, you know, the looks set like American of Chopper. American Chopper. He opens up one of the big red stand-up toolboxes. And in there are various pistols and knives and whatnot, I guess, that he does his body modification with. Pulls out a pistol. You really don't get a good look at any bullets, I'm thinking, now either. Well, previously in the thing, that he shows him loading it, taking uh -huh. out a real 38 special bullet, putting it in the chamber, and, and yeah. cocking it. Well, yeah, and, then, and then he's sitting the guy down. Uh, the guy's obviously nervous. He's got a towel over his uh, shoulder. Sits in the chair. The guy's explaining to him what's going to happen. And he goes, I'm going to shoot you on the count of three. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, the guy goes, give me a minute, give me a minute. He's sitting in the chair. Guy cocks a gun. Goes one, boom, Bam! and just shoots the gun on one. At which point the guy in the chair goes fuck. Oh, he starts going oh. oh. He he stands up now. The towel that's over his arm is covering any bit of wound or or anything. But you do see some blood coming down. And then the uh, the guy's still cursing. The garage door opens up to reveal an ambulance that's just waiting there. I guess for this to happen. Uh. 
who was it? Ben brought up the fact that he goes, look at the ambulance. It looks like it's from 1970s. It was like the movie uh, Mother Jugs and Speed. <laughs> Ever seen that one? No, but the ambulance. <laughs> or no. Fuzz. The <laughs> or or Cannonball Run oh, Ambulance. I'm not gonna cannonball Run. No, Anthony, I've not seen that movie. Jesus. That was Bill Cosby <laughs> and Raquel Welch, I believe, was in that of one. Of course it was. Uh, and uh, I was, a, I was a, a gaffer on that movie uh, back in 1972. You and some <laughs> schmuck from Indiana saw the movie. <laughs> Congratulations for showing your intelligence to <laughs> <laughs> the and, uh, just looked old the guy that when when the garage door opens up it's a big double now they got to get the guy to the hospital immediately yeah. and he's walking and falling down walking falling yeah. but down they didn't even put oxygen on they right. did or, nothing they did nothing the, the guy was standing like ned from uh, pulp fiction <laughs> right the garage door opens and then the guy who's uh Manning the ambulance is having a cigarette. He's sitting there because that's the perfect time to have a cigarette. The second the garage door opens, now obviously they heard a gunshot. (laughs) It happened. Sure, it happened. They're outside the garage door. Uh The garage door opens after hearing a gunshot. The guy that's in the ambulance is standing against the ambulance, one foot kicked up on the side of it, leaning against it, smoking a cigarette. (laughs) Now, wouldn't he know if he heard the shot that now is go time? <laughs> you know, but he's just waiting. The door opens. He's like, oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. We're ready. Yeah. The I guy guess. that that shot now, so supposedly shot, uh, rubs alongside of this filthy ambulance <laughs> and leaves a blood stain <laughs> on the side. Like it's WWE. Yeah, and there's no stretcher. There's no oxygen. There's no nothing. Well, he's a no tough guy. No compresses. They just throw him in the uh, van. <laughs> the guy got in the passenger seat. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> and, and, he, uh, and he, didn't even, he didn't even move his map book. Right. <laughs> and he takes off. In hindsight, these are all very excellent points. Of I'm, course <laughs> they are, Steve. I'm having a very hard time disputing anything. This is the biggest bunch of <laughs> shit. Never mind. And, I, you know, and, and after this, and of course it would have it would have uh, helped if I had actually uh, done a, little, a tiny bit of research. Because yeah. when I went to the actual uh, website for the film and the uh-huh. director... Uh, a few clicks past the main page was a whole uh, cast list of this film. Oh, really? Yeah, with characters and actors' names. And I'm looking at this oh, oh, shit. I'm like, ah, damn it. Well, Adam from New Jersey wants to defend oh. you. Adam? Yeah, yeah, man, this thing's real as hell. Oh, sure it, it is. It goes in, like, documentary style. And they're like, oh, you, you see the part where the guy's in the car just talking about, hey, oh, I think I want to do it. I did the Pierce things. I did the tattoo. But, you know, gunshot wounds, the next thing, man, the next big Yeah, we know, but it's all fake. Yeah. No, it's not. It's yeah, dude, real. Blair Bitch Project, that was, that was fake, too, dude. Dude, how do you say this is real? Because I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> that was a great yes. answer. Uh, let's go. Uh, the, the thing that got me was that ambulance guy. Yeah. Because the second, boom, you hear the bang from outside that door, you would think they'd be all ready to go. When the door opened, it was hysterical. You know how you'd stand outside a bar talking to your friends, one foot against your vehicle, and you're kind of smoking? It looked like he didn't even budge. Heard the gunshot, I'm going to finish up this camel. Didn't budge. Jeremy, New Jersey, what's up? How you doing, boys? All right. Uh, I, I got to agree with Steve. I mean, I, I believe that it's fake now, but up until this morning and all your points, I, I thought it was 100% real. I saw it years ago at like 3 in the morning. Really? I mean, you just, it's on Showtime. You're not even thinking of it as a fake. It's just sandwiched between a couple other little documentaries. Yeah, they played his filler on Showtime a lot is what yeah. I'm hearing. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, but yeah. Yeah. don't you realize that it's against the law you can't get a license yeah. you know like what, tattooing but, to shoot somebody. Right. Here's here's how I'll, I'll defend myself. The, the reality is I get hundreds uh, and hundreds of these uh, reality type videos a week, and I'm not uh, and I'm not saying that, that that it was right that I that I fell for this, but I get between the Kate Moss video, the helicopter crash videos, the gang street, uh, the the gang shooting videos that yeah. I get, you get a little desensitized. Uh, and you occasionally, get a, little, a couple. Fil- yeah, uh, they slipped through the cracks. A couple fake ones slipped through, and this this one got me. This we, one got me. We got his uh, the ambulance. We got to listen to the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to Chris on Long Island. Chris, what's up, boys? Hey, hey man. Chris. Congratulations for one year. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Listen, Anthony, I just wanted to let you know you're not the only one who saw Mother Ducks and Speed. Oh, really? A lot of guys who are in public safety are big fans of that movie. It's a big cult classic. It is a cult uh, classic, that movie. Yeah, Harvey, Harvey Keitel. Yeah, just like Taddy Harvey Shack. Keitel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Larry Hagman was in that. Um, what you call it? Larry Hagman has a scene in that movie that just makes everybody in my profession cringe. He's boning an unconscious girl in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital. <laughs> it's a funny movie. It just makes us cringe, I swear <laughs> to God. 
Uh, all right. <laughs> What's it called? Right, that's all I got to say. Nothing Mother funny. Jugs and Speed. Mothers. Mother Jugs and Mother Speed. Mother Jugs and Speed. That's their their names. Good all movie. Right. Good movie. You'll uh, love it. Thank you, Chris. Hey, you know what we could do right off the bat? Uh, we got the delusions in modern primitive, uh, primitism or whatever. What the hell is what that? What is that? Primitivism. Acknowledged. Remember the guy that uh, got shot that we were talking about yesterday? Oh, right. You want to explain this to Adam? Cause he yeah, wasn't I wasn't here. here. The lie? Well, Steve uh, was buying this, and, you know, Steve... Runs a very successful website, and mm-hmm. uh, I, he got bamboozled. And we Steve's had a, been we had desensitized. A po- we had to point it out to Steve that he got bamboozled. Steve's been desensitized. I uh, I, I like thinking of Steve in this instance like air, an air traffic controller. He's just crazy. He's a lot of things uh, whizzing by the radar screen every day, and uh, there he is. And, and it's very hard for him to distinguish what's real and what's fake yeah. anymore. Yeah, sometimes you just you get hit with so much of this uh, of this stimulus in the form of death videos. This morning I was watching a polar bear attack video, an anaconda eating a deer, or a or a or a or a lion video. And after a while, you see so much of it, and a lot uh-huh. of it is real that. Every once in a while, something like this slips through. It slips through the cracks, and you need people that kind of are on the outside looking in to tell you, Steve, that's full of shit. Yeah. It is not real. It is fake. Right. You've been bamboozled. As was the case. And I don't think the guy was trying to bamboozle me. No. I just think I didn't pay attention, and I ran with it. You were hoping it was real. I was Sometimes really... you watch something, and you go... I want it to be real so much that I'm just going to say it is. That's how <laughs> urban legends get started. You never hear a dull, boring urban legend. They're always, like, exciting, fun, have a weird twist to them. You know, because, and that's why people continue to tell them, because you want right. it to be real. Are you explaining our meeting with A&A still? Exactly. I you want it to be that. real, but it's just myth. <laughs> I thought you moved on from that. It's urban legend. We got a great show for you guys. It's yeah. Mythbusters meets hey. podcast. No, they're really? they're they're changing the format around a little bit, and uh, they're very excited to get an arable pilot out there. Yeah, sure they are. Stop it. Anyways, uh, you want to explain to Adam? Yeah, this uh, this this video clip that turns up is this <coughs> documentary right. of this guy who's into body art, tats, and piercings and stuff. And apparently, he got bored with that whole thing. Mm. Wasn't uh, I guess um, showing. Uh, showing enough. So he decides he's going to um, get himself shot in the shoulder and that the bullet scar, the wound, will right. be part of his body art. So he sits in a chair, has uh, sandbags behind him, gets some guy. It's in this garage type atmosphere. It looks like uh, American Chopper or right. Pimp My Ride. The or Pimp My Ride right. type garage with this guy that's wearing uh, sort of an apron and surgical gloves. He opens up one of those snap on tool, big toolboxes yeah. in this garage thing. And there's guns and knives and stuff, I guess, for Instead his craft. Instead screwdrivers. Yeah. Okay. And wrenches. Pulls out a thirty eight, loads it up, uh, tells the guy uh, that he's going to count to three. The guy goes, oh, give, me, give me a minute, give me a minute. He's uh, like nervous in the chair. Has a towel slung over his left shoulder. Now, there's a towel there, so you can't really see his shoulder very well. Mm. Then the guy points the gun. He goes, one, boom, and shoots after one. And then you see some blood. The guy gets up, his arm is all stiff, and he starts cursing. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Screaming. Screaming. Uh, falling at, down as he tries to walk. Yeah, he's, he's falling down. Some guy's trying to help him up. Then the garage door opens. <laughs> and here's where it just got <laughs> completely ridiculous. And this is where we started openly mocking Steve. Yeah, yeah that he could dope. possibly think this is real. <laughs> the garage door opens. There's an ambulance there. Now, if you were doing something like this... It could obvi- it could be possible that you would have an ambulance on call waiting to take the guy to the hospital because okay. that was the plan. Shoot him, get him to the hospital. So the ambulance is waiting, but the, this garage door opens up. This ambulance was like a 1974 Ford Econoline van. <laughs> it, I, I said yesterday, it, was, it looks like it was from uh, Mother Jugs, Jugs and Speed. Speed. See, Adam remembers <laughs> that movie. Wait, how uh, do you remember that movie? Oh, Mother Jugs an old and Speed? Classic. Bill Cosby? It's an old classic. Yeah, I'm sorry. A- and then the ambulance, one of the workers, one of the guys, the medics, is standing, leaning against the ambulance, one foot up like on the ambulance, leaning, smoking a cigarette. Now, we start thinking, he heard the shot. He had to have heard the shot. Boom. All right, it's go time. It's go time. The garage door opens. He's just puffing a cigarette. It didn't even, it wasn't even like, wow, there it is, the gun. We got a wounded guy. So they kind of drag him toward the ambulance. Uh, 
he his wound is now rubbing up against the side of the ambulance, leaving this big blood stain. Oh, God. And they don't have anything prepared for him, the ambulance crew. They throw him in like they're driving him to the deli. He got in the passenger seat. <laughs> they just get in. Yeah. No prep from Nothing. the uh, medics or anything. They And they take off. At, at which point they go back to the guy who shot him, who was just standing there uh, laughing, going, wow, I can't believe that. <laughs> that was great. And, and, and Opie just goes, this is such bullshit. And we start right. laughing and mocking Steve. So we yeah. got the audio. Finally. They sold yeah. that show to A&E, I heard. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're going to do it every week. Jackass with lawsuits, like we say. <laughs> See? All right, here we go. So here's the audio from that uh, that scene. Mm -hmm. You need me to sign something or whatever, you know, hearing Dan come up. But, you know, whatever. No, I'm not concerned about that no. at all. It's not. He's not concerned about having this guy sign something. He's about yeah. to shoot the guy, and the guy that's going to be shot says, I'll sign whatever you need me to sign. And the guy goes... No, nah, I'm not really concerned about that. Not concerned about that? Well, maybe... Yeah. Maybe the police would be a little concerned about that. Yeah, because uh, I don't think you can ask someone's permission uh, to shoot them or have somebody ask you, hey, would you shoot me, and, and just be fine. I don't think it, just because somebody asked that it's still legal to shoot somebody. No, it's attempted oh. murder. Yeah, it tends I, to be a crime. I think it's yeah. a crime it's a felony. That, <laughs> that transcends the guy's permission. It's not like... Uh, you took mom's car. Is mom going to press charges? If she doesn't, you go home. It's like a permission slip from yeah, school. Yeah, this, this is a crime. Falls under the assisted suicide thing, I think. You're not allowed. Uh, here we go. Concerned about that at all. It's not going to make a difference whether or not we sign something or not. Because it, I'm, I'm shooting you. <laughs> I'm shooting you with a gun. Yeah. And right now, that's not recognized as an art form. But that's going to change. That's going to change. Do you want to put these on right now? Uh, you can just oh, hold on. Steve. As you listen to this, as Steve. I'm listening just to this, know I'm, I'm, Steve bought this as real. This and is the acting porno is acting is better yeah, than this. The acting is that I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> this is going to be recognized as an art form. <laughs> art yeah. form. That's well, going to guess change. Guess what? It's an art form that's being practiced all over America every day. Great yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's called the hood. Right. Again, again, look at us stealing from the black man. Do you want to put these on right now? Uh, you can just hold on to them for a moment. And we're going to put the towel around you like this. Is there going to be a lot of bleeding right away? Or? Um, no, there shouldn't be. The exit wound is going to be a little bit bloody, but not too bad. Steve. Jesus. I know. I can't I know. even look at you. Thank you. Loading the gun. Okay. 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 We're going to go ahead and put our gear on. Go ahead and put your eye protection on. Well, at so least they're being safe. Eye right. protection. Why don't you put your arm up like that? Uh-huh. There. That's good. And I just want you to relax, okay? <laughs> this will be over very quickly, but take right. a few breaths. Get relaxed. You okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right? Relax. Why don't you go ahead and pick cool. your elbow up? There you go. Just like that. There you go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the count of three. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. Ready? Give me, give me a second. Me. Okay. Right. Ready? One. You're all right. Now. You're all right. Fuck. It's okay. It's okay. Look at me. Listen to me, you're all right. Ah. You're okay. Fuck. God damn it. Fuck. You're going to be okay. You're okay, though. You're okay. Let's go. We're going to get you out. How do you feel, Drone? How do you feel, Drone? How do you feel? I'm going to need a bit. Fuck. God damn it. What's up, folks? Ah. What are you doing? What Right. Yes, right, him what's up? Why can't you just paint? <laughs> You're gonna be okay. When you can, man. When you can. And, and there, you hear the ambulance drive yeah. off. <laughs> 
So the towel, <clears throat> the towel's actually over, right. so you can't see the dye pack, or how does that work? Yeah, yeah you can't see the dye pack. You can't exactly. see, but but something blew a chunk of meat onto the 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 back of the um the sandbags that well, were behind he him. He said the exit wound is going to be a right. little bloody. And, uh, yeah, it, it, the sandbags that were behind him had this big splatter of blood like in the movies, and it just doesn't happen like that. It really doesn't. It's, I don't know. Uh, I've never seen someone actually get shot. So. I saw someone get shot right in the arm. Same really? place mm-hmm. that this guy got shot. Ben almost got shot this it morning. Was <laughs> <laughs> it was a twenty two, but uh, it, it and it wasn't the exit wound that bled. It was right. the entrance wound. This guy, this kid got shot. His father shot him out in the desert. Okay. We were hanging out, shooting guns, Oof. and this guy had this gun. It was this old six-shooter, and you had a quarter cock it to load it so you could turn the cylinder. No safeties at all. The firing pin's right on the hammer. It's the old style. And he loads it up, brings the barrel up, and pop, goes off, and his nine-year-old son is standing right in front of him. Boom, it goes right in his shoulder, right out the back. The kid's standing there, and I, I'm just watching the whole thing, and it looked like a fountain, like a water fountain. Exactly like a water fountain uh, shoots water in a little arc Mm -hmm. of blood came right out of his shoulder. He turned completely white, just kind of made a sound and dropped right to his knees and flat on his face. And I was like, holy shit, that guy's dead. (laughs) Because it looked like it hit him in the heart. It hit him in the shoulder, uh, right next to like the shoulder chest kind of area. Went right through. And there but was no exit wound or anything? There was an exit wound, but no blood came out of it. How's that possible? I don't know. Wherever the Whatever blood vessel it hit going in was the one that really right. sprung the leak. Artery. And, uh, yeah. And he just, boom, went down. And then we're in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Uh, we, uh, we were in between Barstow, California, and Needles, Arizona. 50 miles in off the highway. So, you know, had to load him up in the pickup truck with ice packed on uh, the wound, and drive him out. And then we had, because it's a gunshot wound, we had the cops come uh, to check out the the scene. And they showed up with guns drawn like a SWAT team, because they're like, who the fuck was this, the Manson family hanging out in the Mojave (laughs) shooting each other? It's like, we had a shooting in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And there's people out there, like, armed to the teeth, too. We were just, like, I I don't know, I... I forgot how old I was. I think 13 about the time. And, uh, like, I had two six guns, one on each hip. <laughs> I, I had, like, a uh, an old Winchester 3030 on my back. Chaw tobacco. We had doom buggies, <laughs> the big Bowie <laughs> knives, like, just... I know. can drive that tanker. And we did. It was. It was <laughs> like the road war. Yeah. We're all kids with guns and dune buggies. And that's what, like, that was my father's idea of a great time, which it was. We would we would tow these dune buggies out there, and they were the old Volkswagen fiberglass body put on top of them, dune buggies. And we would just drive around shooting anything that moved, <laughs> anything that fucking moved out there. I'd ha- I'd be driving, have like a kid uh, that kid Charlie that got shots nine. He's hanging on to the roll bar on the back, just unloading with like a, <laughs> a an AR-15, <laughs> and, and uh, his his brother. Is is uh in the passenger seat with a 12 gauge, just popping jackrabbits and squ- just anything that moved. We have boom, 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 just firing, and that was our idea of a good time. While the uh, the, the parents, <laughs> parents, while the older people that were there, because any just using the word parent is ridiculous, just stayed up at the old mining shack because that's what it was. It was an old uh, turquoise mine. Uh, stayed up there just drinking to the point of passing out, and letting the kids drive and shoot. All day long. That's amazing. Wow. I couldn't stay up to watch Charlie's Angels. (laughs) Thank you, Adam. Yeah. I'm with you. Oh, it was great. He tells these stories. I'm like, yeah. What? We we we'd climb up these because it's the Mojave Desert. You ever look down from a plane? There's it's like sand, uh, brush, and mountains. So we'd climb up these mountains and take go up to these boulders that had been there, probably perched up there, and watch dinosaurs walk across that valley. And we would push these big boulders down into the canyons, uh, while other, while like some of the the guys that we were with were walking down. Mm-hmm. It was like a roadrunner cart, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd hear it coming, like boom, 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 and it would echo, and you'd hear them scream, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
we, we, we would take these big, they were old stoves that were there from when old miners were there in the early 1900s. And we would, uh, for some reason, there was a bunch of um, spray paint cans all over the place. And we'd spray the spray paint into these ovens until the mist built up and then throw matches Matches. in it. And it would just, a flame would shoot out about eight feet. And one of the kids that were there uh, singed his eyebrows (laughs) and the front of his hair off all the way to the middle of his head. And he had to walk around like that for like a month. I built a tree fort (laughs) one day. See, we talked about the like, tree fort. I went to my cousin's danger. house. He got the operation game, and yeah. we played for hours. In yeah. Oklahoma, we were more into the flaming arrows. We'd oh, like, that's we'd, a fun one. Yeah, we'd, we'd get uh, arrows, and we'd put, like, cloth around the end, tie it around the yeah, end. You and learned it on TV. Dip it on, in gasoline and just l- let them fly. <laughs> And then, then chase the arrow and put out the fire that it started. <laughs> and the, the best was when we were, we were shooting at a target on the fence, and I shot this flaming arrow, and it, it nicked the top of the fence and bounced up and stuck in the side of my neighbor's house and starts to catch the, the edge oh, a little bit on, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, big black mark on the side. I was, like, trying to wipe it off. It was a bad scene. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, remember Randy? He, he used to play a game with his friends when uh, they were kids. In the neighborhood, they would take a bow and arrow and shoot it straight up in the air as hard as you could pull back, and it would disappear. And they would all scatter because you, <laughs> now you can't see. It's coming right. down somewhere around you, but they couldn't see it, so they'd all like, Wah! and just run for cover. Uh, they were doing this, and uh, they lost track of it. It starts coming down. There was a woman across the street uh, doing her gardening, so she's kneeling on the ground doing her gardening the arrow came down right in her calf oh ah. and just stuck her to the ground yeah as she just starts screaming horribly (gasps) wow yeah we used to take the you know the wiffle ball bats and you get bottle rockets right up there (laughs) with a little hole in the bottom of the of of the bottom of the handle Uh you put a bottle rocket in there and it's like a bazooka oh yeah now you can aim it yeah you do that with uh, wrapping paper tubes also like a bazooka tap the guy on the shoulder light it up have the uh, bottle rocket fight. Why are we all <laughs> trying to top his stories? No, you're oh, not sorry. Top yeah. Like, you know, your, your old man takes you yeah. what, target top shooting. Top his Wyatt Earp story at night. Right. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to go target Wyatt shooting with, your, with, with your father kidding? or something. Or Like, when, when I was a kid, I used to blow squirrels off the, you know, out of, out of the backyard trees with a pellet gun, but nothing like firing. That's oh, this I mean. is just. Yeah, exactly. It was like the, the no, role Anthony's, warrior. I joined a militia when I was <laughs> <Yeah>. eight. <laughs> It was definitely romper room meets uh, the road this warrior. This always happens. You try to top your buddy's stories, but we're not going to top his shit. It was yeah. a hell of a time out there. It yeah. was truly the Wild West. Yes. Well, yes. a couple of instant feedbacks, of course. Um, Anth, did you pan for gold during the gold <laughs> rush? And a uh, nice story. Um, and then did you go and report back to General Custer? <laughs> People assume that I've met people in the 1800s. Yeah. I, well, well, you tell these stories. I met Groucho. He met Groucho. He was born in the 1800s, but we're starting to think he's a vampire. <laughs> I met mm-hmm. Groucho when I was a very little kid, and he was like days away from death. W- Groucho was in the Mojave Desert. No, that was at something called that a was Day Zeppo. at the Races. It was a, a celebrity <laughs> event that Groucho, they wheeled Groucho to, and I got to shake his hand and got an autograph from Groucho Marx, and he died yeah. very short time yeah. later. I was a little kid, yeah. but people seem to yeah. interpret this yeah. as me hanging out on the set of a Day at the Races. You know, the, mm-hmm. you know, if Groucho was alive today, he would be about 105. Yeah. So yeah. at this point, we have to just assume that we don't know how old Anthony is. <laughs> Anthony? Uh, Pete Niggity came up with this. It's a quickie. Ant is a vampire. <laughs> Lies about his age. It's no Nosferatu. <laughs> From an Ann Rice page. Look out, Opie. It's your blood heel train. Bram Stoker's subject. This song is pretty fucking lame. <laughs> hey, a little, uh, a little quickie. Thanks. Hmm. All right, it is Whip Em Out Wednesday. We'll get into the whole wow thing in a minute. Well, they don't, they no, don't. the person that accidentally got shot wasn't Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs>